And one, and two, and one, two, three, four. Hey everyone, Matt Haywood from EntertainmentBuddha.com, finally back on the big boy mic for a OG Buddha cast. It's been quite some time since I've graced the airwaves of EntertainmentBuddha.com nation, so it feels good. It feels good to flex these vocal cords outside of the good old raw radio, which you guys can catch my nightly EB recaps every day. Follow me on Twitter at Matt R. Haywood for that nonsense or at Amp Buddha if you just want the quick low down and dirty action of what's happened on eb every day or at least monday through friday because who wants to do that shit on the weekends all right so it's time gamers it's that time of year you know what time i'm talking about it is the fall triple a video game gauntlet so i've got my friend anna Fibo on the cast with me tonight to discuss it how you doing anna i'm doing good how are you I'm doing good until you made me buy all those fucking Marvel Infinity characters. Listen, but... listen. I'm just an enabler. I'm, <laughs> you, I, you are I, bad. You I, are I don't. Bad. I didn't put a gun to your head. It was just kind of like, well, it is a good deal, so you might as well just do it. I, I you did hook me up on the Best Buy thing because I did not know that was happening, and yep. I, I think I saved something like sixty bucks. So that's like yeah. you know at least three figures I got for free, pretend free, if you want to say yep. it. But you are. I mean, they are just magnificent figures and we were, we were chatting before we got on the cast and, and the game's not bad either so uh it, it, this kind of plays into our triple a discussion people i'm not just already kicking off on a tangent here on episode what are we i think we're on 62 believe it or not of the booty cast here um so what we were going to talk about anna and you know we were dishing on this before we went live on the air and that's uh every year and doesn't this seem like kind of a recent trend? A, a recent as in maybe ten years ago, uh, when you know when we start getting more consoles in the market, where where the fall essentially right at the end of August, early September up to December, it seems it's week after week after week after after week of must play AAA video game releases. I mean, it's gotten to the point where I, I was telling Anna before we got on. Just a real casual scan through the new release schedule from the beginning of next week to December. I counted 22 fucking games that I considered must play for myself. So 22 games I consider I need to play that are coming out within the next, you know, two and a half, three months. So it's it's getting obscene at this point. And, yep. uh, you know, I know we can't all buy 22 games and I doubt I'll buy all 22 games that I want. I mean, just, I'm not made out of money yet and we don't get review codes for everything, but it, it, just imagine if you're a kid these days or in high school where you don't have a career, you, you're not making money. You got to rely on an allowance or a $5 an hour job or your parents. I mean, would that not stress you out going into the fall knowing that you're probably only going to get to play maybe one or two of the huge games coming out that all your friends are going to be talking about and you're going to feel like a loser for not having? Hells yeah, but I'd also play up the... Well, you know, Christmas is coming, right? You know, True. You know, Christmas is coming, right? Or if yeah. you have a birthday that's the October, November, December months, hey, you know I got a birthday and then you can get me that for Christmas, right? So Yeah, well, you're right there. There's no doubt about it. That, that This time frame, it's it's very easy gift shopping if you have a gamer mm -hmm. in your life. There's no doubt about that. So, and it brings up a good point. Ladies, if you're listening, guys, if you're listening, if you got significant others, you know, younger brothers, cousins, whatever, keep that in mind because mm -hmm. I, I know I would. I, I can just sit back and, and see little 10-year-old Matt or whatever and his buddy Tommy gets a new game every week and he doesn't. There would be uh, some serious stress that I would be internalizing over that. Like, yeah, I'd, I would feel like a loser. I'd feel poor. I'd feel like my parents didn't love me. And it, it would be tough. I mean, these days I make my own money. I don't have any kids. My wife makes some money. So, I, I, you know, I can go out and buy these types of things. But even thinking 22 games in two and a half months, there's just no way that I can even justify that. Mm-mm. So, uh, how, what's the most games you've purchased in a two month span? <laughs> well, um, do you care to admit? I mean, just just you, not not lumping in your husband's buying too. Um, I think I've gotten four, like back to back. So you're talking about 
four games at $60 a pop. That's $240 gone. Right. And I can tell you right now that I have probably played one out of the three that I've purchased. That's so. the best part. That's the other thing that <laughs> plays into this the insanity of this fall AAA video game rush is that there are so many must play games that it's it's physically impossible to play them all. I mean, you could you just can't do it. Twenty two games, like I said, and that's just me. I mean, I'm sure if someone else went through the list, they would come up with more or less. I mean, again, a lot of the video games, it's an opinion based industry. You like what you like, you hate what you hate. But I mean, it just it, even thinking about. I mean, on my plate right now, I have three previews and two reviews, and that doesn't even touch any of the AAA games that I want to play starting next week. So I'm sitting here going, I mean, there's no way I'll even, I, I'll be lucky to play two, maybe three of the 22 I want to check out. And um, money, sure, but for me, it's more of a time crunch at this mm-hmm. point in my life. Uh, so that's kind of stressful, too. Yep. So, all right. So, so, I've been throwing out this magical number of 22 games. Again, these are this 22 games I kind of looked at. And, and we are focusing on the big boys, the AAA. We're talking EA games, Ubisoft games, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. So, obviously, there's probably another 10 or 15 indie titles that are just as worthy to talk about. But we're just discussing AAA so the indies can go fuck themselves for this podcast. All right. Love you, indies. Love you. <laughs> yeah, love you guys. Nothing against you. I've actually been playing a ton of indie these days ever since I got a a gaming PC, but we're going to stick to the big stuff, big budget, add add dollars coming out the wazoo to promote these games. So 22, I said, I'm not going to go. Well, I'll rattle off just real quick the 22 I picked, and then Ann and I will kind of we'll we'll take a sliver of those, our top three or five, and kind of discuss why we consider them the best. And when we tell you they're the best, they're the fucking best. So don't try to enforce your opinion on us. Just take what we say as canon. It's golden. You can take it to the bank. All right. So real quick, no particular order, no particular release date order. So Disney Infinity 3.0, Halo 5, Mad Max, Blops 3, Destiny to Taken King, Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid, The Phantom Pain, Super Mario Maker, Forza 6, Star Wars Battlefront, Star Fox Zero, Lego Dimensions, No Man's Sky, Rock Band 4, Uncharted Drake Collection, Beyond Earth Rising Tide, Transformers Devastation, Guitar Hero Live, AC Syndicate, Zelda Triforce Heroes, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Just Cause 3, and XCOM 2. Bam! There you go. Bam! That is a fucking list of yeah. games, people. I, I mean, I think I've heard, I think I heard s- maybe six <laughs> or seven that I'm like, oh yeah, I completely yeah, forgot exactly, about that. Right? <laughs> yeah, you, you start going. I mean, we're all at, at E3 in June. We're seeing all oh, these yeah. reveals. We're like, yeah, this is great, and then you do kind of forget about it because, I mean, let's face it, over the summer, the video game industry, besides your E3, the Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show, and you know, PAX Prime this weekend, it, it becomes pretty. Uh, quiet on the western front so you kind of forget about all the stuff that's coming out in the fall but yeah i mean again that's just a sampling 22 games of the biggest well-known brands coming out and like anna said i was even surprised at some of them on there i'm like oh shit that's coming out too (laughs) that's coming out ah fuck i know it's like listening to some of them i was like wait a minute i saw that at e3 i Totally thought that was coming out in 2016. Shit, what am I going to do now? Yeah, I threw No Man's Sky in there because it's there's a potential for a 2015, late 2015 release. Developer still hasn't confirmed, but I'm kind of just, uh, I'm banking on it's going to come out. If I'm yep. wrong, I'm wrong. So what? Uh, you can go fuck yourself. All right. So. <laughs> now, out of those 22, I have selected the, the five that I feel like I have to play to, cons- to keep calling myself a hardcore gamer or just a, a blogger of video games. Hell, just even it, to call myself Entertainment Buddha, I have to play these five games. So I'll start with one of them, and then we'll switch over to Anna, see if she agrees or she can throw in her own vote. So I, I think the one I am most excited for, and this I am a fanboy of the franchise. We've talked about it before. I love the lore of the franchise. I love its setting. I love the characters. And that, my friends, is Halo 5 Guardians. That is probably my most anticipated game coming out in the next two and a half months. What do you think about that, Anna? 
Uh, you down? I am. I mean, I'm excited. I'm always uh, a fan. I mean, I'm a big fan of Halo, so I'm definitely going to play that. Looking forward to more story because Halo 4 hooked me, so I'm really curious to see what's going on with um, Master Chief. Right. I mean, Halo 4 story was awesome. I, I don't care what any, anyone says. I really think it it truly did separate itself from the original trilogy and kicked off a whole new trilogy with really deep lore stuff that's been in the books, but not really in the game. And the game kind of brought it to life. And they, I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I think some people, they look at Halo and they're like, I don't give a shit. Just give me the multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, where I I love the campaign side. I, I do. I want that story. I want to see uh, this this cat and mouse game between Chief Squad and uh, Shithead Squad for yeah Lock. Lock. Uh, mm-hmm. I also want to see what my two hundred thousand dollar collector's edition <laughs> looks like in my house because yeah. I got to see it at E three and I know people are shitting on it and they're like that's so expensive but it is a beautiful statue of master chief and I'm, Agent, all Agent i'm thinking Law. about is when that comes where the hell are we gonna put it like it's it's thinking about finding space for it now hey so i'm telling you what y- you guys need to buck up and get a house yeah and, tur- and, and well you can't have a basement in florida but no. you, need to, you need to dedicate a wing of the house to all your geekery oh, like i did that like, would i mean that would definitely happen <laughs> I, I say if I if my Funko Pop addiction stays at its current level, I will probably overrun my available basement space by next year. What? It, I, I dude, I take them out of the <laughs> box too, and I put them on shelves, and I line them up five deep and probably fifteen across. Wow. <laughs> I'm running out of space even doing that. So uh, I've actually moved a bunch of shit onto my workspace now. I mean, if, if you saw my desk. <laughs> I look like I'm fucking five. <laughs> I, you, th- this probably makes no sense for you because I doubt you'll watch it. But if you, if anyone that's ever watched the Mike and Mike broadcast on ESPN, the, the radio show, but the TV part of it, they have a sh- all these bobbleheads and shit on their desk. That's pretty much what I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> and I'm looking at my man Snoop right now. Snoop the bobblehead with his fat joint in his mouth. Well, He's it's funny that you say favorite. that because at work I have, I have a uh, little Walking Dead – zombie that's from one of those little mini fun co blind packs and then i have a friday uh the 13th i have a jason that was also one of those little fun co uh blind packs and then i have a baby dancing groot on my desk and then i have there you go so how uh, many people give you shit or they just leave they're just like hey oh no i get stopped all the time Oh, I didn't know you were into that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you like that. I have a uh my husband was sweet enough to get me a woolly Yoshi imported from Japan. Oh, I saw that. that is, that's not is, the, the mega size one, is it? That's like the normal no, size. That's the regular amiibo size one, and it is the cutest thing on the face of the earth. And when they start selling them here, I know you you won't be able to find them in any color because they really are that fucking cute. Like I mean, anybody would want to have that, and no, I get I, hey, stopped all the time. I'm with you. I, I'm I, like I did with uh, Disney Infinity. I'm trying to avoid the amiibo craze, even though I, I do think they're cool. I would like uh, to collect them. And there's a but, shovel knight amiibo coming out. Good lord! Uh, so, like, yeah, I, I I actually passed that on to our late night news team, so hopefully they'll cover that. Right now, it's just a uh, it, it propped up over in the UK, and they quickly like wiped the tweet that announced it. But it looks like it's going to be a reality. So yeah. You know which one I want, and I still can't find fucking pre-order details, is the 8-bit Mario one. I want that like nothing <laughs> else. You know what I? You know what else I've seen? I don't know if you guys... You guys do have a fair... Nick collects the Amiibos, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, did yeah. He, I did was... he get the uh, display stand that's like the old school ending of a Super Mario Bo- Mario Brothers level? No. Oh, dude, you got to check it. I'll, I'll send you the link outside the cast, but it's it it's definitely what I would use to display. Is it the green tubes? It, it's, you know, old Mario, you finish a level, you yeah. walk up the steps and jump oh, on the yeah, flag. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So yeah, you, no. you put an amiibo on each step. I, I don't. I doubt you could put your whole collection on it, but no. it's a pretty radical display stand, not going to lie. Uh, I, I also like the, uh, the Rob one, like the robot, the gyro mm-hmm. robot from the Nintendo. Oh, fuck. I'll end up. Like I said, I, I'll give you the Yarn Yoshi. I may even want that one. 
but I definitely want the the eight bit Mario. All right. So what the hell are we talking about? Collecting stuff? Yeah. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. You know, I, right now, speaking of collecting, I'm looking at my unopened collector core box for August, and I want to open it so bad, but I have to save it for an unboxing. So <laughs> maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I I got serious collecting problems. Uh yeah. Oh, speaking of, it might as well stay on this tangent, but you know what next Friday is? Mother fucking Force Friday, which means they are unleashing all of the Force Awakens toys. Oh, Lord. Yeah, Help somebody, exactly. please, please exactly. save Matt because he will be the first one. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if he starts camping out the store just to get all of them. I, it depends on exclusives. I already missed out on the the six inch stormtrooper from Comic Con. My mm-hmm. buddy that snagged most of the exclusive Funkos for me, he's like, dude, it was nuts. That shit sold out in like ten minutes, <laughs> and people were like stabbing each other. And uh, on the show floor, they're already going for quadruple, five times the the selling price. Uh, but I'm not really much of an action figure collector anymore. But I will make an exception for the Force Awakens only because I own. Damn near every Star Wars action figure from the movies, the green cards, the orange cards ever made. Yes, I even own the prequel ones. And for some of the prequels, I own doubles because I used to think that I was going to open them, (laughs) even though I bought two and still left them both in the box. (laughs) And they'll never be worth anything because they're from the three shittiest movies of all time. So it was just a waste of money. But (laughs) yeah, so let's get back to video games because that's what we do. All right. So Halo 5, that's my number one. Uh, it, it sounds like it may be on your list, but probably not your top. So let's go mm-hmm. ahead and w- what's your number one? What are you most looking forward to in the fall AAA release rush? Uh, I'm so looking forward to some Destiny Taken King. You I'm... are, you know, I uh, let's let's talk about this because Oof. you've really you've really come around to this game. Oh yeah, what would you say over the past five six months, maybe four yep. months? Mm-hmm. You're you're like a full on Destiny fangirl at this point, huh? Like, I mean, and I'm I'm still in the process of writing my reflection piece because it's it's probably uh, I I mean I can't even explain it because I I feel like such a jackass when I think about it, which is why I I went way back to when the game was first announced because I I really need to get my point across just how in a right. year like so much can change in that game and i mean i think bungie has really tried to turn around some of the things that they thought there's no doubt about that i mean they've been on top of it best they can it's just a shame that it's taken this long for them to realize that i mean the whole light cap level thing that's still the stupidest thing on the face of the earth you still kind of have to grind away to finally become a level 34 but it's going to be really fun once that level cap goes well, away. Well, it goes away, right? I mean, now, yeah. just regular experience, you can level up. I mean, yeah. you're, you're still going to get bonuses from the light and this, that, and the other thing. But now, yeah. it, once you hit 20, you don't have to worry yeah. about getting bullshit. You can just play. Right, Which, right. you know what? I, 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 I'm known to grind. I don't mind grinding. Fuck, I play Marvel Mighty fucking Heroes 5,000 <laughs> times a day. And all that game is is a grind. But the the, the the problem I have with Destiny grinding is it, it wasn't guaranteed. You could no. bust your ass for two or three hours and come out with mm-hmm. nothing at it's the end true. of it. It's true. I mean, I, and I'm still doing that right now with a lot of raids. Because now that I'm finally to that level where I can go on raids and I can do Prison of Elders, like, it is some of the most intense gameplay ever just because you literally have to have a fire team of like six or five people to do some of these raids and you don't pull in random. So just trying to find a fire team to do a raid sometimes is, is damn near impossible. That's why I wanted to ask you. So you're back into it now, hardcore. And I, I am not going to lie. I am jealous of you. I I've always deep down wanted to be a hardcore destiny fan because I love Bungie I love the idea of the game. I think the game world's very interesting, but like we've said, they just really mm-hmm. stumbled. And, and really the joke in, in the industry is uh, the Destiny 1.0 beta is finally ending, essentially oh, saying yeah. the whole first year was was a beta period to test things out. So, but do you have a core group now that you hook up with? or are you I just... do. No, okay. I, I do. I ha- And 
<laughs> this is how much we are into it because we have two 360s. So we went and we got two copies of Destiny for the 360 so that I can play with my husband so that I could help him level up before the Taken King comes out so that he could be the appropriate level and he could get all the cool gear and stuff. And in turn doing that, uh, one of our really good friends has Destiny on 360 and then we found out another one of our good friends has it on 360 and then his brother has it on 360. Wait, you're so, playing it on 360? Yep. Not the one? Nope. Wow. Yep. But... We, Could we even play in the same world then? If you're on no. 360 and I'm on one, it's console mm -hmm. lock. But the, the cool thing though is that even when you load the game on the 360, once you sign in with your gamer tag, all your your characters are there how if you have all three they're there you pick whichever yeah. one and you go so it's not like you're starting all over again huh. which is which is cool well, let's let's say you wanted to move on to the xbox one version are you fucked i mean is there no way to import your 360 characters no you just load in the game you sign in and your characters are there so it, it works backward it goes both ways so oh, if no you're shit. on so one it's, it's tied to your gamer id yeah then or something yeah like that. It's it yeah it's tied to your Bungie account or gamer tag how however yeah because yeah. like like I said I really I do I, I feel like a loser because I'm not into Destiny I mean it's like the the World of Warcraft of 2004 <laughs> where I know it's this huge movement in gaming and I consider myself pretty in the know and I don't play it so I, I do I feel like I'm on the outside looking yeah. in it's it's now like I don't have any. I have friends that are playing it, but they're all, you know, hardcore cracked out level 30 times mm -hmm. 10 million warlocks and this, that, and the other thing. Just like, I, I couldn't even play with them at this point because they're so leveled up that my guy would be a shithead. So I'm like, should I just start over on the PS4? Because that is the preferred platform. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, I actually uh, am getting the PS4 console for Destiny. Are That's you, how man, much. You guys, you guys are almost as bad as me at this point. Oh yeah, so you're buying, oh, yeah. you're buying like the the big high end fucking electronic collectibles. Yeah, I mean, and we, and I got a copy of Destiny on PS4, and it was on sale. And then I get the twenty percent off for the gamers club, and then we had a gift card, so we paid like seven dollars for the game. All right, so if you're me, what, what do you recommend? Should I just forget about what I did on the Xbox One all that time? I think my guy's like a level 26 uh, and just start over on PS4 or... You could, just... you could just start over on PS4 and then once you get to level 8 where you can unlock bounties, just start playing, just start doing the bounties and just start leveling up. So then that way by the time you're done with the game, you're already a level 20. And then you can go and, you know, start doing things that that'll get you better armor with light. Right. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just hesitant to scrap all that effort, even though I really haven't touched a game in any sort of hardcore capacity since September of last year. Well, I'll say what what has really changed the game it, are the expansions. Once they release the expansions for the Dark Below and the House of Wolves. It was a well, completely well, different game. There we go, right? That that makes up my mind because I have the expansions for the Xbox One, so I'm, I guess I'm just staying there. Yeah, and I mean, when you get... Well, you're level 26, so you could do Vault of Glass on normal, but even Vault of Glass on normal is oh, a pain in a the ass. I heard that's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, it's okay, a this pain. is just stressing me out. Let's move on. I, I'm just getting <laughs> all stressed. I'm thinking about all the games that I have to do for work. And then games that I want to do for fun, and it's just like it's giving me heartache right yeah. now. I so. mean, and I'm and I'm constantly like, all right, who has Destiny on like what? Because then I can have a fire team on PS4, and then I have a fire team on 360, and I can have one on Xbox One. So I'm like, I need to get this shit figured out. All right, out. well, if I ever get my act together, I'll definitely hit you up on either platform because I, I do want to get into it. I do want to kind of have that community sense yeah. to gaming because really. All my friends these days are either done gaming or have too many kids. And it's really gaming has become a solitary experience for me <laughs> in my 35th year of existence, which is kind of sad to think because I can remember back in the day. I mean, it was every night I was getting on with the same group of, you know, sometimes yeah. 10 people. And, I, and I'm going to and I'm going to admit this on the air. And I was and I'm pretty sure I was going to put this in my reflection piece. But it's to the point that I've joined a clan for Destiny. 
like offline, like they have their own website and shit? No, like through Bungie.net. They... Okay, there's, okay. They can create, you know, you can create a group or your clan and then you just join your group and you join your clan and you can assign it on Bungie.net and it shows up on your little oh, I'm emblem. I'm so jealous. Yeah, I'm so, so it's, jealous. it's to the point that, yeah, I'm in a clan. So it's sometimes I'll be on and I'll just get a message. Hey, can you help with a strike really quick? Sure yeah. thing. Let's do it. it. You know, it makes you feel wanted. <laughs> So, or I'll message them and be like, hey, do you have time for like Prison of Elders? Sure. Let's do this. Damn it. I know I'm going to fire up my Xbox one night. <laughs> your ass is going to be in some fucking strike on Orbital or something like that. And I'm going to be playing a damn game that I have to review that came out last year. But it's a good game. So. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I just want to play Destiny. Yeah. yeah. And, I keep, and I keep bugging one of my buddies at work. I'm like, stop playing Warframe. I'm like, stop playing that free shit. Start playing Destiny. I don't know. I don't know what you're wasting your time on that <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. All <laughs> right. So him. let's get back to our our top five AAA fall video game releases. I'm gonna come in with my number two, and this is a tough one for me. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and make a decision here, and I'm gonna say Disney Infinity 3.0. And yes, people, I have barely even played Disney Infinity 2.0, but after Checking out 3.0 at E3, getting my hands on the figures, getting into Marvel, uh, Marvel Infinity, that that whole segment of 2.0. I'm I'm fucking pumped for this. A because I'm gonna get rad at badass looking Star Wars figures. B, it's Star Wars. C, I haven't played a Star Wars video game probably since The Force Unleashed 2, which was terrible compared to the first one. So I'm kind of excited to get back into a Star Wars video game world, even though it's a little cartoony, kid-friendly looking. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm pumped. I mean, the, the the stuff we saw at E3, the the flying missions, it just it's such a charming looking game, and the fact that it's Star Wars and they've got that kind of super deformed look, I, I'm sold 100%. I've ordered all the fucking figures. I got the Target figure, the Walmart figure, the mm-hmm. Toys R Us figure. I'll be getting the, the Force Awakens figures when I can. And beyond- I'll be getting the fucking light-up lightsaber figures when I can. So <laughs> I, Disney Fan 3.0 is my second most And not to be game. an enabler, but watch out for those Black Friday sales or some of those sales because they will have buy one, get one 40% off. Or buy one, get one 50% off, or buy two figures for like $15 or, you know, so just So here's what I want to know, because you're you're our DI expert, obviously, you've you've been there since 1.0. So we we already know there's a a select set of figures coming out for the Star Wars Disney Infinity 3.0. Is there only one playset at this time? Or there's two, right? I think they're doing two play sets. I think they're doing... At launch, there's uh, the Rise of the Empire or something, and then yeah. one set in the prequel era, era, I believe. Yeah, something like that. I think so one, is, th- one is story and one is a new one. Right, like and then some of, some of the figures are releasing later in the fall as opposed to... I mean, fuck, the game comes out this weekend, essentially. I mean, I think Monday's its ship day, right? The 31st? The I think it comes out Sunday. Sunday, that's yeah. a weird release day. Yeah. They must be partnering oh, with Nintendo for th- that. Don't worry, to- Toys R Us will be like overrun on Sunday. Parents will be like, "Ah, oh, I gotta get this shit for my kid, or they're gonna hate me." Why don't? I mean, is it that hard to just pre-order? Remember, we pre-ordered ours at E three. <laughs> at E three, when once they announced it, we're like, "Yeah, okay, I mean, I- I've had that shit pre-ordered for the PS four since E three. I mean, I got mm-hmm. Obi one, I got Yoda pre-ordered Darth. You mm-hmm. and I, we both already have Maul." Yep. Uh, I got, and like I said, all the exclusives. But will they release new figures? Let's say in early 2016, in a, in a new oh, playset, yeah. or, or do you just kind of get what you get? You get the core game, two playsets, and then that's it. Well, you yeah, you get the playset, you get the the figures, but I think there are some Marvel ones coming out in the spring of 2016. Yeah, you're I'm, right. The the, the four, sure. that would be the fourth Marvel one then, right? Because you get the, there's the Avengers, there's the Spider Man, and the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll get three Star Wars ones. You think maybe they'll do one for the Force Awakens or something? I don't know. I but. wouldn't be surprised. It'd be dumb not to. Right? I mean, Seriously. might as well. So yeah, I'm I'm and so I just, excited for three And I just want to go on record and say that today is my two year anniversary with Buddha and the very first thing that was published on the site was whoop, whoop. my Disney Infinity whoop. 1.0 review. 
See, I told you she's just, the expert. Just want to go ahead and just throw that out there. And I did say it in my review that be on the lookout for Star Wars because yeah, it was bound to happen. It predicted. Yep. And it came true. And I am pumped. I cannot wait. Yeah, that's going to be so much fun. My my gaming area is going to be such a clusterfuck because right now, <laughs> I mean, again, if you came down my basement, you'd think I either have a, a, a son or I'm like a special person and never advanced past like a 12 year old's <laughs> mental capacity because my table, I mean, I've got the pad to put the guys on and then around the table, I have like 15 Marvel figures. I uh, have my, a, I, I have a, like a carrying case. For the figures, for Disney Infinity Yeah, you, you need something like that. I mean, shit, I, I can't mm-hmm. keep them all. I, I want to look at them. That's a problem. I don't want to lock them up in a case. They're all so mm-hmm. pretty, but oh well. So yeah, 3.0. What's your second uh, most anticipated AAA fall game? Um, I'm looking forward to Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, I can see that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I debated that one. And I'm, I'm ready to to get back into the story and raid some tombs and... Just see how how far Lara Croft has come since her experiences from the first game. See if her boobs got any bigger. Well, they weren't as bad as they were. I know. In I'm, a just, I'm just PlayStation. It's, so. Yeah, it's it's no longer the old uh, <laughs> torpedo tits, Lara Croft. It's a little more uh, respectable. Yeah, it's it's definitely more realistic, and and I get that's better than just let's just glorify it. No, I'm down for that. And that one yeah. actually, I think, comes later in the in the rush. It might be uh, November, I think. So I Probably. might actually have an, an opening for that one. So <laughs> you can fit that into your. Into I'm your gonna schedule. pencil that one in, I think. <laughs> and that's just that's just Xbox One for the time being, right? Uh, was that one of those time? I, I think I think it's an Xbox One only. I don't know if it's timed or not, but I believe it is. Oh yeah, this one is just an Xbox. Yeah, Xbox One yeah. and Xbox 360. So that was a pretty good. I, I, I mean, obviously, as a console maker, those are great deals to make. If I was a developer or a publisher, I, I'd be hesitant about those types of deals. I mean, yeah. I could see like parts of the content being exclusive, like what you know Sony has with Destiny, but the whole damn game. I mean, you're essentially cutting out a whole section of the population at this point yep. in time. But hey, whatever. I'm sure I'm sure Microsoft greased those motherfucking wheels, so mm-hmm. yeah, money talks. Well, All right, I mean they on. lost out on the timed exclusives for Call of Duty, so that that <laughs> is another huge coup for Sony. I mean, I know that kind of went over many people's radars, but you know, kind of being a fan of business in general, when when they first announced that at E three, I was like, holy shit, what? Yeah. Sony stole that shit from Microsoft. Yep. That's big. I mean, look at look at all the news debate it generated last week, and yep. that was PS only. So, okay, my number three. It's a, a tough one, but I think I'm gonna go. Not I'm not gonna since I made my fanboy pick at two. I'm gonna go just on pure want for number three, and that's Fallout Four. Um, based on what we saw at E3 at the, the the Bethesda press conference and shit we've seen since. And just how much I absolutely, I mean, my first experience with Fallout was Fallout 3. I never played the earlier two games. And that was one of the first games that I just fell in love with on the 360 and played the shit out of it. I mean, it was like a Skyrim type of game where I'm talking hundreds of hours logged between the core game and the DLC. So I'm, I'm pumped to get back to a, a proper Fallout 4. I wasn't a huge fan of New Vegas, but from what I've seen with Fallout 4, I'm sold. Plus that Pip Boy edition. I mean, <laughs> how can you not be looking forward to get that? And today I saw that they've officially stopped making it, so it will be a collectible at some point yeah. in time. So if you pre-ordered one, you're lucky. And that that's another hot tip I got from uh, Anna <laughs> and Nick, your buddy, that guy on Twitter. You guys are like, yo, the shit's seriously shit's back up, and I'm like, fuck, I pulled it right up. My phone's like, bam, got it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where we were at, but. My husband just looks at me and goes, you got to tell Matt they're back in stock. You got to tell him. Oh, I'll okay. never, I was. I know where I was. I was at B-Dubs for, you know, Friday night happy hour. I mean, I'll never forget it. I was like, shit, because I thought I fucked up by not getting it right away during E3. But luckily yeah. it did open up for a bit. Yep. Speaking of, where the fuck is the Darth Vader PS4? I don't know. I, I mean, it, there's no, no details yet because I'm seriously considering that. Although I think the fact that it's only 500 gigs is fucking stupid. Yeah. And that's probably why I won't get it. 
But I do. I know you hate the controller, but I I, I want that controller. <laughs> it just it just looks tacky. I mean, I guess that's why I like it. I mean, I mean, if you again, if you looked at my basement, it, it's I'm like <laughs> king of tacky. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. you're the king of Funko tacky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know. I I think it's I I like. Obviously, I like exclusive, limited type of stuff. Yeah, it's like, I have it. You don't. And it, it, it is one of those. <laughs> it doing. is one of those things. So, oh well. All right, you're you're number three, Anna. What do you got? Um, my number three. I'm probably gonna say Yoshi's Woolly World. Ooh, good one. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I I'm looking forward to an adorable Yoshi game. It's just. Why not? It's Nintendo, and it's just a, it's just adorable. And you have a little woolly Yoshi amiibo that you get to play with, so why not? So will, will your import work with that? I'm assuming it probably will. Yeah. Or will you have to get the American version? No. I think the packaging is just the... That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I got it, I was like, oh, it's got Japanese writing on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I am feeling you on the Nintendo thing because I've kind of gone through a renaissance over this summer with Nintendo because my young nephew, who's will be turning four this weekend, uh, was finally exposed to gaming, and his, you know, his mom showed him the Wii. Whatever. He's, he's three or four. He doesn't give a shit about graphics yet, even right. though I think it's terrible. I just want to get him a Wii U <laughs> or something. I really want to buy him a PS4, but not yet. Uh, maybe if I get the Darth Vader version, I'll give him mine. But anyways, so he's he got into it. And, you know, when I was down there for the fourth. I was playing it. And then my wife was playing. It, she's like, I really enjoy this. And we came home like, you know, I have the Wii U and Mario's. And she's like, oh, so we, we've been playing that every night during the weeks, which is nice because my wife, uh, she's not like you and, and your husband, where you guys definitely have a passion for gaming. It's it's not her number one, but she does like yeah. playing uh, Super Mario on the Wii U as long as I'm not an asshole. And that's. <laughs> Uh, I think there's only been one session we played where she hasn't had to get up and leave over my behavior <laughs> because I really have a fucking problem playing video games. I, I just I, I become very angry, impatient. Uh, it, 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 let's just say there's a lot of times I'm like, I fucking hate you, Toad. And I'm sure you can guess who's controlling Toad. And that's not always the nicest thing to say. But. <laughs> I don't well, care what anyone says. Anyone that's played the new Super Mario Brothers or Mario Brothers U, and you can play with two characters at the same time, yeah. there's nothing more difficult in a Mario game than playing with someone else. They become the biggest boss of every level because the motherfuckers will jump on you and shit you down a hole or they'll run into you and push you off of ledges. I mean, it's hard playing with someone. So I definitely get pissed off, but I am I am feeling Nintendo all over again. Yeah. Have you played kinda... Splatoon? No. Oh, good lord! You need I to know. you need to play Splatoon. There's Splatfest. The Splatfest that they I have know. are well, that's amazing. The, uh, the Transformers ones going on right now, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can be a, a Decepticon or an Autobot. Or Autobot. It's too bad they don't let you keep the fucking shirts though. That's kind of yeah. chintzy, but I mean that's that's Nintendo through and through. Yeah, but look at but look at all the free content they've released. Hint, hint, free yeah. content. <laughs> well, here's the problem. My Wii U playing time is is literally just for my wife and I, and she is she's again not a huge gamer, but she likes the platforming, the Mario shit. So yep. I, I, that's one reason why Splatoon has not been introduced because I I don't think she'd give a rat's ass about it. So. I'm not taking anything away from it. I think it, it is a great game Nintendo made, and it's it's a little bit different. It definitely has a following. I mean, obviously. Uh, but, yeah. So, mm -hmm. no Splatoon for me. But, my fourth most wanted fall AAA release may get us playing a different game on the Wii U, and that is Super Mario Maker. I don't know why I'm intrigued and excited for this game. I really don't, because I... I, I already can foresee what's going to happen i'm going to throw it in i'm going to be blown away by it and within three days i'll probably never touch it again or never build another level because you know there's there's time constraints running a gaming website and you know, get to get your masters and having a full-time job this that and the other thing and i think it'll just become a game where it's like you know what i don't want to fucking sit down and think and how to make right. levels clever <laughs> and difficult 
but I think the concept is ingenious, Mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be another thing Nintendo rolls out that will influence an entire generation of young minds and potentially create new developers from it. You know, it's Uh, like everyone wants to throw Nintendo under the bus, but it's like they've... They just keep coming out on top, whether... Well, they want, know, know what they're good at, and right. that's what they stick to. And it gets them in trouble sometimes, because that's why they don't sell consoles, and that's why no other third-party games really even sell on the Wii U or the Wii. But with their first-party shit, it's tip-top. Yep. I mean, you, you can't mess with that, especially Mario. And everything mm-hmm. I've heard about Mario Maker, everything I've played, it's a game that I know I will thoroughly enjoy which is why it's on my list but it's also one that i'm fearful of that will probably disappear within maybe two weeks Uh, and honestly that's that's a problem many of these games and i have been talking about because they do it's rapid fire you know you get halo 5 one week the next week call of duty's coming out i mean you Mm -hmm. tell me you're gonna fully play through halo 5 beat the campaign beat it on legendary solo because you know you have to do it right before the next game comes out, no way. So, I mean, that, that, this is what this cast is all about. This is a stressful period of time, people. We're going to give ourselves aneurysms over this shit. Yep. Motherfucking corporate America, capitalism, and then dumping all these games on us that we have to buy yep. and we'll never play. Slim pickings. Yeah, you, just after you, after you hear this and you make it through the fall, just go back to our backlog conundrum cast from a few <laughs> months ago. And it's essentially, we're, we're in a cycle. You got the fall AAA rush kicks things off, well, kicks making your backlog a mile high off, and then it just doesn't stop all year. It's very, very cyclical. Yep. All right. So, what is your number four? Hmm. My number four. I don't. I don't know if I really have a number four. That's fair. I mean, I'm sure I can. Hey, I mean, you don't I'm, have to I'm, love everything. No. I mean, I think what <laughs> I think what's interesting is that this is the first year that I don't care about Assassin's Creed, and that says a lot. I I was I was actually gonna say, I was like, what? No AC? Because I know. I mean, I know you're a big fan, but after the, the whole dis- the Unity disaster, well, it's, I mean, it it really fucked you up, huh? Well, that I mean, yeah, that partly, but I think because. They're out of that era where um, not so much history stuff is being involved. I mean, and not that the French Revolution wasn't important or um, anything that happened in Black Flag wasn't important. Wait, but wait. I think the ties, because some of these games are not really tying into each other anymore, I think that's where I'm kind of starting to disconnect from them because I liked how all the games intertwined with each other and that they were connected one way or another and probably assassin's creed 3 from that point on it was it was kind of like all right you killed you killed desmond so where, where do you I, go from i'm here? with you there i mean i thought ac4 it's still my favorite i just the, the whole pirate ship shit oh, yeah. mesmerized me but the, the whole real world side of it just is it's completely un- uninteresting at this point I mean, as wacky as the Desmond story was, at least you had the Desmond right. story. Now it's just like, what was it in Unity? Are you still some asshole making a video game for Abstergo or what? Well, in there, you honestly, you don't even deal with Abstergo that much. Like there's not, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a whole lot of Abstergo stuff because it, it's, they're hack they're hacking in, I think, and they want you to get something, but I don't know. It wasn't memorable. I'll tell you that much. I see, I see. Because I I'll play it someday. I mean, I I have to. I've invested all this time into the all the other um, ACs. But yeah. yeah. I mean, Unity was was very ambitious. They really. They yeah. Really look what that to, got them. Right. I mean, it, was, it turned into an ambitious piece of it was broken a shit. Shit storm, and then yeah. when they end uh when they announce Assassin's Creed Syndicate and then they have that intro where they're like, you know, we learned a lot from the last game yeah. and it's like... Fuck, fuck multiplayer. <laughs> fuck right. co-op. Yeah. That was so... The concept was cool and I played a few games of a few co-op missions with someone, but then it's like you kind of... 
like don't go out too fast like remember you got to be stealth we can't be seen and it's I don't want to yell at someone you know if we get caught it's like I'd rather just do this stealth mission on my own and not have to worry about anyone else and yeah all that nonsense but yeah I'm I'm not crazy about it and I remember I was talking to Ray about this well <laughs> I well through Skype and I'm like I just feel like Assassin's Creed Syndicate is such a ripoff of Sherlock Holmes I just feel like it's got this Sherlock Holmes vibe and I don't like it I don't care for it it's it's Sherlock Holmes meets Gangs of New York is exactly right. what it is I mean Bill the Butcher might as well be the main character yeah or, or the bad guy I mean they have fucking gang gang fights right <laughs> I, I mean I don't oh well I mean I well I guess we'll just wait and see how yeah. it ends up I mean I and Assassin's Creed 3 like I it's he's whatever his name is um Connor He's probably one of my least favorite characters, but at least you had the American Revolution in there. Yeah, and it was yeah. cool to see some of our founding fathers in a video game. But, I mean, the whole Paul Revere part, was he like at a house or something? And he's like, his pants are off. I don't even know. It's <laughs> like, really? Like, come on. Like, this is this is how he goes and he lights the towers or whatever it is that he does. I'm like, come on now. Heck yeah. But yeah, so getting a handy from somebody. <laughs> Probably. It's like, did you come in and interrupt? Ben Franklin. That? <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> this is going to a really weird place. <laughs> so let, let's bring it on home. I've got my my fifth pick. Anna's definitely smarter than me and kept hers limited because she's much more realistic in what she's going to be able to accomplish this fall. As far as all the new AAA games coming out. So my last one should not be any surprise. It's the second Star Wars game on my list, and that is Star Wars Battlefront. Um, sucks it doesn't have a campaign, but based on what I played at E3, if it does build up a multiplayer community and things keep moving, uh, there's no way it's it's going to suck. It'll be a very fun game, and it will be one that I hope to keep playing well into 2016. Again, it will all depend on friends playing if there's a community there to play but i mean it's star wars it's dice it looks fantastic it plays great i'm sold sign me up november 17th give it to me so that's my that's my fifth pick those are the those are the five that i will play and give my full attention to although fallout 4 i may have to save that one for christmas break because that's going to be a lot of time Yep. So, what do you think about that one, Miss Feebo? Yeah, sounds cool. I'm just not. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I'm just not feeling strictly multiplayer things anymore. I mean, well, you're exactly right. In November, I'll probably be bitching my face off <laughs> over the game not having a campaign, and that's just going to be another Titanfall yeah. in three months. But. And and not only that, but I'm also being realistic because. Taken King is what September fifteenth, three yeah, months you from can, then. You, you're I'm still gonna any, be playing you're not Destiny. Playing any of these fucking games? You're not. You're not <laughs> playing any of your top three or. four. Well, Halo, Halo, I will. Halo, okay. I will because that that's a must. I'm definitely in, gonna in do between that. strikes and raids. You'll yeah. pencil in some Halo. <laughs> <laughs> in between, I told you to defend that spot. Oh, what are you doing? My God. Couldn't you just like leave in that? You, you actually have to actively participate to get XP, right? You couldn't just like leave your guy there and and have people get XP for you. Well, by the time you're well, see, I don't know how it's gonna work with the Taken King because you're earning XP as you normally oh, yeah, would. That's but right, right. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know in Borderlands, you know, someone can do whatever, and you'd get. XP. Yeah, that's what they almost need murder cave back, and then you just put like a rubber band on your trigger. Yep. And just have your guy or girl, your war, your warlock, right? Yeah, I'm a. I yeah. have a level so thirty three warlock. And just have a your warlock blast and shit into that cave. Yeah. yeah. You have oh. two characters well into the twenties and ones in the thirties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Yeah. How do you do that? I mean. Do you not feel like you're just redoing all the same shit again with your second character? I mean, that's one reason why I am not a huge fan of New Game Plus or starting new characters in MMO type of games. I, mean, well, I feel like I've been I, there, I, done that. Why Why do it again? Well, I do, but because I've done those story missions so many times, it's 
just like a cakewalk. It's just kind of like, all right, I know the enemies are going to come up from there. This is going to happen. Oh, there it is. And then yeah, I, I guess it wasn't on. like from a challenge standpoint, no. just like a time investment point. No. Like, wow. It's <laughs> not, I mean, it's not that, it's not that bad because not even from like the challenging standpoint, but because you already know what's going to happen. You just blow right through it. Like you just, yeah. you start your mission and you just go and that's right. it. Like I say, I'm jealous and I'm hating. <laughs> I'm hating. You got, you got, but your character's. Your backup character is probably ranked higher than my main, so. Uh, well, whatever. no, I'm 24, so I mean, I have to try to at least get my my Titan up to the to the 30s. I'm just Damn missing. It. I want a Titan too. I one. fucked. Up. I I liked my guy. I, which one am I? I'm the. Uh, not a warlock. Not a Titan. Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. The the but after the playing hunter, the Titan with the Taken King, man, I fucking want that Thor's yeah. hammer. When um. If you ever get to the point where you're going to do any raids, your hunter is probably your hunter or your titan. There's one that has invisibility. When you're when you're doing um Crota, invisibility is crucial during that mission cuz it is ridiculous on gotcha. oh, Yeah. Mental note check. Yep. So all right, Home Slice, let's go ahead and bring this cast to a close. So, everyone, that is our personal top five. So Anna's is a top <laughs> five-ish. <laughs> yeah. And then it just, again, a, a preview of 22 of the most anticipated AAA fall video game releases. Like I said, there's probably way more than 22. We didn't include indies. We didn't include obscure stuff. So sorry if you're the one guy out there that only likes Japanese imports. Tough shit. This industry is driven by the AAAs, and obviously this is their time to shine. Starting this Sunday, literally, it's on like popcorn. We got Disney Infinity, Mad Max coming out this week, and Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Right there, three great games. Metal Gear Solid Five's already getting perfect review scores. I like Mad Max at E3. So, it, it, again, next week is already a shit show, and it's <laughs> only going to continue to get worse week after week after week after week. So, it's a good time to be a gamer. It's not a good time to be poor. Nope. Start working those extra hours. Yeah, and it's not a good time to have a job because <laughs> you literally need... 24 hours a day, seven days a so week. So basically, to if get you through have, all these motherfuckers. So basically, if you have parents that'll throw money at you or just get you whatever you want, good. If you're a yeah. college student, oh, you're so stressed out. Here, let me buy you this video game so you can unwind. Yeah, oh, if your you're rich, <laughs> you're good to go. If you're on welfare and don't work, you're good to go. You got plenty of time. You can take your welfare checks, get some video games. You know, that's food stamps are for food. Take the cash, buy some games. You know how to do it. All right, people. Matt Haywood here signing off of the most recent Entertainment Buddha cast where we just broke down the massive amount of AAA video games coming out between now and December of 2015. So have fun with that. Make sure to follow the site at Entenboot on Twitter. Hit it up on Facebook, Entertainment Buddha, YouTube, Entertainment Buddha, Raw Radio at Entertainment Buddha. I'm at Matt R. Haywood. Anna, you want to sling any plugs to the fans? Where can uh, they you find can, you? You can follow me on Twitter at Fabzilla. If anyone is looking for someone for their fire team on Destiny, hit me up. Oh, look at it. She's hoeing, <laughs> she's hoeing herself out. <laughs> hit me up. I'm more, now. I'm more than willing to help out. <laughs> Gamer tag call, is Febzilla. I'm going to call Nick and get you put into Destiny <laughs> Rehab. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Gamer tag is Febzilla. Or is Febzilla he just as bad as you? Yeah. And for uh, PlayStation, it's Febzilla 12. So yeah, add get me. Get some of that, people. She is hardcore. Trust me. I see her every night without <laughs> fail. So She's in my friends list doing something in Destiny. So yeah. she's your girl. Yeah. All right, people. It's been a blast as always. Hopefully, you don't get stressed out over all these games coming. And hopefully, you keep your browsers tuned to entertainmentboo.com because it will make you a better geek one post at a time. Peace.